Yeah, you might have arthritis, but you still have a voice to give God praise. Amen. You might have a slight pain in the hip, but you still can walk. Come on, somebody bless him. Amen. You might not have all that you want, that you believe that you want, but God is still able to do exceeding, abundant, above all that which you could even ask or think. You might not know what tomorrow looks like, but I don't know about tomorrow, but I know who holds my hand. Some they trust in their chariots, but some in their horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. We've got so much that we can, we can depend on. We've got more than we can ever imagine. One more time. Uh, 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 with your Bibles in your hand, let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter number 3. The last time we were here, the last time we were here, we were speaking to you on the subject of faith. Amen. We're going to continue in that subject matter. Um, I want to uh, uh, move to the, se uh, the third verse. The last time we spoke to you on the first and second verse. Amen. Today we're going to uh, sort of take a slightly deeper dive into the uh, uh, third verse. And then this evening, uh, we're going to be doing a session with you on a few remaining verses. We may not be able to get through all of it, but one of the, I, I, I've been fascinated uh, about this subject, um, and I won't say it's a difficult subject to teach or to preach. Uh, it can be challenging, but the important thing is for me is that you understand the steps and the things that needs to be done for us to walk in faith. Amen? Individuals that walk in faith, I said it the last time, their speech is very different. Hello, somebody. They talk differently. They look at things very differently. They approach things that very differently. When, something, when there's an uprising that comes in, whether it's be in your home or on the job, you respond to it very differently because you trust a God that no one can see. Here's one thing that I do know. When there's a problem, you pray about it, nobody can take you to court on it. Nobody can sue you because you prayed. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. There is no discrimination. There is no whatever the term that might be in the 21st century. You can't sue God. Hello, somebody. So it's very important that we really move in this path of faith and approach it where it becomes a part of our DNA. It flows through our bloodstream. Anything that gets into your bloodstream will affect the rest of your body. Hello, somebody. If you have an infection in your bladder, if it gets into your bloodstream, you've got a problem. Hello, some, right? Likewise, for any other uh, ailment or any other disease that gets into your bloodstream, it creates a problem. Can you imagine, ladies and gentlemen, when the Spirit of God gets into your bloodstream, when everything that we do is in your bloodstream, you can open your mouth and speak some things into the atmosphere. And there has to be a response because the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, the Word of God will not return unto Him void. Let me, let me, let me slow down here a little. Hebrews chapter 11, verses number 3. It said, By faith we understand... That the words were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of the things which are visible. And if you don't mind quickly jumping to the book of Genesis chapters number 2. We'll read from verses number 1 through to number 3. I'm actually going to start at my finishing point and work my way backwards in the text. Genesis chapter number 2. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his works which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his works 
which God had created and made. Father, we thank you for this word and for what we are about to receive in Jesus' name. I want to speak to you from the subject already done. Already done. For those of you that are at home, wherever you might be tuning into this broadcast, I want you to say it out loud. It's already done. Those of you that are here at Ridgeway, say it. It's already done. It's already done. When we go to the end of creation, six days, and we read the conclusion of what takes place on the seventh, in Genesis chapter number one, verses one and two, it says, God created the heavens and the earth. Without form, without the void, darkness was on the face of the deep. Nothing there, no shape, nothing to give anyone any idea of what the possibility could be. Darkness was on the face of this deep. Now it's interesting that darkness is on the face of the depth of darkness that you couldn't even get to the end of darkness because it was so deep that there was no end. But darkness filled that which would be nothing. So the writer de describes it as deep. And then it says the Spirit of God moved. That's a powerful, that's a powerful line right there. And the Spirit of God moved. Ladies and gentlemen, when the Spirit of God moves, anything and everything, it doesn't matter what it is, it's got to respond to the move of God. Darkness is on the face of the deep. Heavens are created. Nothingness, void, nothing, nothing existed. But when God moved, something took place. Can we step back into our world, our time, that when we were living in sin, we were living in darkness. There was no shape about us. We were just a blank slate and our desire was to sin. Our desire was to seek after the things to satisfy our carnal appetite. When we were hungry for a party, we found the way. And we thought being at the, the club, being at the party, being at the event, it satisfied us to a certain extent but we were still in darkness and there was still no shape or no forming that could be identified that would be worthy of what God would expect. But one day, ladies and gentlemen, we answered a call that resonated in our spirit. And when it spoke and captured that part that the Bible said, and he breathed the breath of life, and man became a living soul. When God breathed into you, there's a DNA sample of himself inside of you. But when the Spirit of God moved upon you, you responded to the call. Genesis 1 verses 3 and 5. Then God said, let there be. Let there be light. After that, he saw that it was good. Then he divided the day from the night. A distinction between the operation of what the expectation is for how day is to perform. You will never see the sun trying to compete with the moon. You will never see daylight trying to compete with darkness. There is a time when day peaks over the horizon and darkness recognizes that it's, it's time to step back. 
there will be no conflict in the heavenlies. Because when God said, let there be, there's nothing can, that can alter the voice and the words of God. I'm, I'm going somewhere. Just come with me for a little bit. So when God establishes something and he says, this is what it is, that which he establishes should not, cannot, must not try to compete with something else that God has already established. It's like two churches being called of God to do the same thing and church A competing with church B. Hello, somebody. You follow me, right? You cannot compete with what God has ordained. Because in everything that God calls, he places a time slot for it to operate. This is called and classified the evening and the morning, day one. Chapters number six through eight. God speaks about how the waters are to function. There is a separation between the heavens and the earth. There's a distinction as to the performance and the expectation of how the clouds, the heavens, are to operate. There's a distinction of how the lower levels of the heavenlies are to operate. The dividing of the firmaments, the dividing of the waters, the, div the division where in which each category can be successful in their operation. Are you following me? Then God named the work. This is day two. Verses 9 through 10. Then God speaks to the waters below. And it's operation. Doesn't do anything yet. He just speaks to the waters. I need you to gather yourself together and become that which is already ordained from time. The Atlantic Ocean has not changed its parameters. The Indian Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, they're all structured based on this particular book, this particular chapter, this particular verse. Then God named the dry ground after he spoke and asked it to operate based on the calling. Then he named it and called it earth. Here is where I'd like to spend some time. Bring forth because it's already done. Genesis number 1, 11 through 13. Now after there's been a division, a separation, where each subject matter that God has called and spoken into existence, they are now assembled and placed where they ought to be. Now the earth, the dry ground has been deemed to be earth. Now the earth is now bringing forth grass. Now it's bringing forth herbs that yieldeth seed. Fruit trees that yield fruit according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Ladies and gentlemen, let's look at this a little closer. After God has called you, after God has ordained you, after God has sanctified you, from the beginning of time, God has placed something inside of you that it should bring forth according to its kind. It should produce after its kind. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, uh, men bearing seed and women bearing eggs and produce. I'm, 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 I'm not talking that. I'm talking on the spiritual level that God has called you to produce after what he has already ordained of what you should become. 
But oftentimes we are impatient and we will not rely and wait on God for what God has already purposed in our lives. Ladies and gentlemen, can I introduce to you that anything that bears a seed, it must die. Because in order for a seed to grow, it's got to die. The challenge is many of us don't want to die. And I'm not talking coffin death. I'm talking die so we can be rebirthed to be able to produce that which God has already ordained in our lives. Can I get an amen? So there becomes a struggle and we're trying to figure out what is going on. So some of us believe that I'm wondering if I'm cursed. I'm wondering why can't I excel? What is she doing more than I? I'm tithing, I'm coming to prayer service, I'm coming to fasting service, I'm doing all these different things and I believe my heart is sincere and, I'm, and I just can't figure it out. So what the devil has done is turned you against yourself. Hello, somebody. Because in order for the enemy to keep you away from what God has ordained for you, you will internally start fighting yourself, criticizing yourself, casting yourself down, and believing that this is God's will for your life. So there's a pulling, and there's a tugging, there's a fighting. And dare I say, can't sleep at night, loss of appetite, depression set thin, headaches set in. If you're not careful, schizophrenia might slowly start seeping its way through. All different types of emotional, psychological things begin to happen because the enemy has turned you against yourself. Because he recognizes if I can touch your mind, excuse me, if I can play with your thinking, if I can shift your belief from what God has purposed for you, then you will never become who God has ordained you to be. Because if I can constantly put warring at your doorstep, if I can constantly put fighting at your doorstep, now I start thinking what people are not thinking and I start believing that somebody hates me when nobody is even thinking about you in that capacity. So there's a constant struggle in the natural and then you move it into the spiritual that you can't even give God praise. So I fight daily. Because the seed that has been placed in my spirit to blossom and produce after its kind, it cannot produce because I've, 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 I've caused that very seed to lack nourishment, to lack sunlight, which is the glory of God, to lack worship. If worship is missing, if the word is missing, if God is missing, then anything that is placed in your being, it will die because it needs that which has placed it to survive. Hello, somebody. So I need to worship. That's why it's very important to worship. So, yes, I know, sometimes I don't feel like lifting my hands, but worship is not a feeling. Hello, somebody. So you don't go based on your feelings. You go based on the reality of who God is. And if you know he's an El Shaddai, then you worship him. If you know he's an Adonai, then you glorify him. If you know he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, you'll feelings don't detain who God is. You praise him because you know that God is God. So we lock ourselves in a prison and if we're not careful we throw away the key and we keep in the courts of sympathy not giving it but looking for it and when that fleshly part of us is not receiving those things we deem that there is no love we deem that there nobody cares we deem we deem we deem that's why many leave churches and they go somewhere feeling like they 
got what they're looking for, but what you are really looking for is, is really a good dose of God in your life. But you're focused so much on the experience of the flesh that you missed out on what God was trying to do to you. God told Moses to get out of Egypt and he had to go through his desert place. Abraham had to go through his desert place. If you want an encounter with God, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to go through your desert place. Leaving your church, going to another church doesn't solve the problem. You impound, impact the problem. God's trying to get you to a place where the very tree that has been planted in your spirit will bring forth. Can I suggest to you that many of us, we have hindered our own spiritual growth because I spend so much time watching and wondering why Susie or Sally or Johnny has gotten that opportunity and I fail to recognize you stay in your lane. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. You may not necessarily get the opportunity to come behind the lectern, but you might be the greatest greeter that is in, your, in the ministry. You might not get the opportunity to be the head usher, but you might be the, the best person that can write letters, amen, to, to send out, whether it be for funding for grants or whatever that might be. You might not be the best evangelist, but you know how to go to a hospital room and sit and counsel and encourage someone because there's something in your spirit that God has placed that has allowed you to give you more than just what you can get in a university or in a college. Ladies and gentlemen, can I say to you, stay in your lane. So what happened in chapter number two, and I thought this was quite interesting, that God rested on the seventh day. That was an interesting part. You can go there. He rested on the seventh day. And then he, his work was finished, ended, done. Look how many ways the writer had to tell us it's done. Finished ended and done he rested not from some of his works but all that he had done this is what makes me I've been thinking on this for quite some time for a couple of years now then God blessed the seventh day sanctified it because in it, he rested. That's where my brain started thinking, well, wait a minute. Why would, you, why would he need to bless a day that he is already in? Because God, I, 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 I work with me on this. And this might be good homework for some of you that are sitting at home. Why would God need to bless a day that he's resting in because he's already blessed? He is God. Then he took the position and sat in that rest day which he blessed. And I'm thinking, well, that, that, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? Then I started thinking, if God blessed the day, all of what he has created in the previous chapter, out of nothing, but then he allocates everything according to the specifications of his blueprint. Then, as we draw closer to the conclusion of chapter 1, we see where he takes from within what he has called 
and has given it life to produce life. The ability not just to be, but to become. An apple tree has a seed in it that you pick, eat, the remnants behind can now plant to create another tree. So he then orchestrates everything that is on the sun out of the sea, fishes, birds, after its kind to produce after its kind. Then he rests on that day which tells Carlton that when I pray, I'm praying to a God that has rested. Work with me. So because he is resting, it tells me that he has already ordained your life. The path of your life is already done. I'm glad you asked that. So why do we pray? We pray so we can get in alignment with faith to understand and see not by sight but by faith what God has already ordained. So when I pray and I say, and this, this bugs the daylight out of me, I prayed and I told God, you didn't tell him nothing because he's resting. I commanded it to be so. Yeah, that may be true, but you didn't tell God. You didn't, you didn't command God. What you did was reposition repositioning your mind to see that it is already done under the hand of God. So when I pray, I pray as though I see it because I see it already. Hello, somebody. If in the event you can't see it, it's because it's not in God's plan. So God rested. That's why that's why, ladies and gentlemen, you have the power in your voice. So watch this. The Bible says Enoch walked with God. And in order to walk with someone, it would suggest that you're either side by side, no one's trailing, and no one's before. You're walking with So Enoch had the privilege to walk with God. We'll talk about that later. Abraham, the Bible says that God said, walk before me and be thou perfect. That would suggest that there is the demonstration of what God is requesting of Abraham, that God has enough confidence in Abraham's move to walk before him. But then watch this. We have been, in my opinion, been misled. A sheep herder does not walk before the sheep. A sheep herder walks behind the sheep. Because if my sheep know my voice, when the sheep are before me, I can speak and the sheep will understand that they're going astray. So they will have, whether it be dogs or whatever it is, to help rein in the sheep to keep them focused in the direction where they're going. If the shepherd is in front of the sheep, he will not see the devourer coming in behind. I wish I had an amen. So therefore, if you walk behind, you have enough confidence in the direction because you can hear the voice of God. Abraham, get in line. Hallelujah. But then in the New Testament, the church walks in him. Enoch walked with God. Abraham walked before God. Now the church walks in him. So if God bless the seventh day, ceased from all of his labor, 
So when I pray to that God, I'm now in that God being able to understand what that God is expecting of me. That's why it's one thing to walk in God, but I need to maintain a relationship that when God says something to me, I know he's talking to me. Because if you're walking in something, every which way you turn, God is there. God, you are in the center of the fullness of the Godhead bodily. You can operate based on not what you feel, but what the Spirit is speaking into your being. So now, I have the authority to speak some things. Because, Sister Sharon, if I'm walking in him, the Lieutenant Governor is the representative of Buckingham Palace. So that individual has the authority to speak on behalf of. Oh, Lord have mercy. Hello, somebody. The press secretary has the authority to speak on behalf of whoever is in that office. So now, ladies and gentlemen, in my conclusion, you have been given the ability to speak on behalf of. Because if you are walking in God, living in God, breathing in God, operating in God. The Bible says his word shall not return unto me void. So when you speak a word, when you say something, send it into the atmosphere. As long as it has been directed and ordered by God, it cannot return unto you void because you are living inside of God there is an operation and an expectation of the authority of the Holy Ghost that when you speak as an apostolic believer hallelujah it will not return so when we walk by faith when we speak we are not speaking as though we are, I'm hoping that this will happen. I'm sending it into the atmosphere, letting the very enemy know that I've got a voice because it's already done. When God designed before Genesis chapter 1, before the foundations of the world, the Bible tells me that there was a lamb that was slain. And if there was a lamb that was slain, Elder Hall, before the foundations of the world, it tells me that before the foundations of the world, I was a part of the blueprint of that lamb that was slain. And it has given me the opportunity to recognize and know that every step that I make, every, 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 every gulf that I have to cross, every pit that may be before me, every fighting and condition that may be before me, it has already been ordained by God. But God, through Jesus Christ, has given me power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon me so therefore I can speak it in Jesus name ladies and gentlemen you have we have been given something far greater than what we could ever imagine if you're watching this broadcast today and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Let me help you here. In order to walk in the abundance of that which is called faith, the first step you need to make is to the baptism. The, the first step you need to make is a repented heart. After you've repented, then you need to make your way to what is called the baptismal. After you've made your way and you are, have been buried Amen. Buried. This is the first time that you will ever experience what it is to be buried. You will be buried in water, but you shall rise to walk in a new life, in a new possibility, in a new opportunity. Because in God, all things are possible. Yes, yes, you're experiencing God. But the Bible said, he reigns on the just and the unjust. 
then why be a distant relative? Why not come into the family of God and experience all the wondrous splendors of what God has for you? So now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Stop fighting with yourself and start walking by faith. Well, I'm not sure. Start changing up your speech. I don't think it's going to happen. But if you don't think it's going to happen, you've spoken into the atmosphere and you're walking behind what you think. What if you said it will be so according to God's blueprint? If you don't get the job, that's okay. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If you didn't get the promotion, that's right. That's okay. Because promotion, it doesn't come from the east, nor does it come from the west. You may not be fully ready. Yeah, your pay, yeah, yes, the, the pay is nice. But what people don't understand, don't look at the paycheck. Because the paycheck, you might have to work three times harder than you were before. Look at whether or not it, it, it is God's timing for you to receive that promotion. Some of us want to be elevated in the house of God but yet we come to church late every week no I'm not talking to you that's coming from work I'm talking to you that's coming from home want to be elevated but don't know how to empty your garbage pail oh the cleaners will do it want to be elevated but don't have the patience to be patient these are some of the criteria some of the the, the role descriptions of what it takes to be in ministry. If you think your child is getting on your nerves, wait till you get in ministry. I wish I had one witness. <laughs> Hello, somebody. If you want to experience what God has for you, let's change the very dynamics, the very approach. Don't just call God, I need a new car. If you do, that's fine. I'm not going gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna to dictate how you should operate in faith. But what I am saying is, look at where you are today. Be uncomfortable with where you are today and ask God, is this what you have ordained for me? Abraham was in a place that you and I wouldn't even go visit to evangelize. God told him, come out of your father's house and I will, I will make you a great nation. That's big talk for somebody who you've never seen. Hello, somebody. How do you grab a hold of that? A voice telling you to come out, and I'm going to make you. But yet he obeyed, and he walked, and every, almost every step of his journey, he encountered a challenge, but he remembered the voice of God. Many of you know the story. One son, the only son, from his wife. Now you want me to kill him. Okay. Well, you said you're going to do this. And you want, you want to kill what I've been waiting all my life for. But God had already completed the work. It's already done. If God suggests or says to you, whatever it might be, what he's telling you is already done on the other side. He's just trying to get Carlton in line to get to what has already been completed. Your time to begin to walk on what Peter couldn't imagine, call water is now I believe shall we all stand and if you're at home please stand I believe that if you want to understand and see some great things unfold in your life remember there is a seed that is inside of you that has the ability to produce in abundance and it's called faith.